policy. But beyond the characterization of President Trump as uh, crazy and out of control, one of the central figures, at least in what we've seen so far, is the chairman of the Joint Chiefs, General Mark Milley. Now, we've discussed him before on the program in terms of his political theater that he engaged in on Capitol Hill. But what is described in Woodward's latest book goes way beyond political theater. Joining me now to talk about this is FRC's executive vice president, retired Lieutenant General Jerry Boykin, a founding member of the Delta's elite force in the, uh, the Army. General, welcome back to the program. Hey, thank you, Tony. Glad to be with you. All right. I, uh, I have a feeling, since we've had a number of conversations in the past over the role of the military, civilian-led military, that uh, you have concerns about the behavior depicted by Woodward in his book of General Milley. Yeah, you know, if this is true, Tony, it's, it's something that I have never seen. Our founding fathers gave us a principle of civilian control of the military, and this is uh, absolutely a breach of that principle if what uh, Woodward describes is true. And I believe it is something that this man has to be held accountable for. Now, I, I always take what Woodward writes with kind of a grain of salt because I've seen some um, – inaccuracies in his previous books of Trump's administration, because there were things I was involved in that I saw and I knew how they unfolded. They were different than what he described. However, I would say that the behavior I've seen from General Milley in his political theater on Capitol Hill uh, would somewhat be consistent. Or I should not said somewhat. I would see as consistent with what is described here by Woodward, it, having back channel phone calls with China's top general trying to say, hey, don't worry about we got him under control, essentially, meaning the president? Yeah. Well, I, all you have to do is look at some of his his oh, very overt behavior, you know, and, and you mentioned that uh, his uh, showmanship when he testified before the congressional committee there and talked about white rage. And Tony, I, I, 36 years in the military, I never saw a white rage. I don't know what white rage is. And none of the general officers that I've talked to could describe it either. So if you look at some of his previous behavior, it, it lends credibility to the fact that he, this may very well be true. And it sounds like something that he would do. Remember that he, after being over in the park with the president that day, when the president held up a Bible, he came back and went public and said, I should never have been there. And uh, you know, I didn't realize it was a photo op and that type of thing. That's when the president here said, well, buddy, i tell you what, it may be time for you to go ahead and find some of those boards for you to sit on because we don't need you in the military anymore. I mean, I just, I, I'm, I am so beside myself about this thing because I've never seen it happen. It had vestiges of MacArthur. According to Woodward, Miley instructed the officers, the uh, the other members of the Joint Chief and the members of his staff, not to take orders from anyone unless he was involved. This sounds like he was usurping the authority of the President of the United States. It sounds exactly like that. And remember that any of those uh, that he instructed to do that who were uh, enlisted members of the military or uniformed officers in the military are under an obligation to obey the orders of the commander-in-chief. And, and the oath that you took as an enlisted man in the Marine Corps said that you do solemnly swear that you will obey the orders of the president and the officers appointed over you. It sounds to me like he has just breached that whole concept. Now, he says, uh, or at least Woodward portrays Miley as uh, Millie to, to have taken this action because he felt the president was unstable, uh, that uh, the president was going to take actions that would jeopardize the nation, get us into a war. If that were the case, what would have been the proper uh, response of the joint, the chairman of the Joint Chiefs? Go lay your stars on the table and say, I cannot resign. I cannot continue in this current position uh, because of your policies, and I will go public. And I will tell America what I see and why I'm leaving, why I'm stepping down. And that would have gotten people's attention. This, if this is precedent setting, which it appears to be, I mean, this could really pave the way for, in the future, a military coup. Absolutely, Tony. And that's why this is not a, a Republican or Democrat 
issue. This is a, a this is a constitutional issue, and it has to be dealt with. I mean, both sides should be very concerned about this. Where you've got a rogue, this is what we've always worried about, right? A rogue, a rogue general that would would step off into something that would be apocalyptic. And this is what it sounds like here that we've got a rogue general there. That uh, if this turns out to be true, that uh, it could be exactly what you're talking about, a coup, a military coup. And that is that that is not America. That's not what happens in constitutional republics. And we've got to deal with this, mm-hmm. and I believe deal with it harshly, to make a statement to future generations that this will not, this will not be the standard in America. All right, General, we're going to leave it there for today, but I'm sure we'll be talking about this in the days ahead. General Jerry Boykin, thanks so much for joining us. Glad to be with you.